This is a brief demonstration video of the CPUville 8 bit processor with the register display attached. In my previous videos, I've shown the construction of the CPUville 8 bit processor. Um, this computer is a stack of five boards at present. The three center boards make up the 8 bit processor. The bottom board is a system board that has memory input output ports and a, a serial interface so you can connect it to a PC or terminal. Uh, and then the new thing is the top board which is the register display. The uh, register display shows all the registers in the processor. This is a very simple processor and has just a few registers. Um, the program counter shows the address of the current instruction being executed. The opcode register contains the operation code for that instruction. The state register shows the current state of the processor control logic. Each, op each uh, instruction um, causes the state to cycle through a series of states. Those states control the flow of the data through the processor and the arithmetic logic unit. Uh, this indicator shows the state of the system clock. Uh, these uh, show the system flags, minus zero and carry. Um, these indicators show the operand uh, registers. There's uh, an operand for many of the instructions. Some have an 8-bit operand, some a 16-bit operand, like instructions that require loading for or storing a byte in memory. And finally the accumulator which is the only data register in the processor. The register display board also has control switches. This switch controls the clock speed of the processor. Um, there's a fast clock that runs at 2 megahertz, a slow clock which runs at a few cycles a second, and a single step clock that is operated by these switches. Uh, in addition, there's a reset button. Uh, this switch, uh, when it's on, means that the processor is using the reset button on this board uh, as opposed to the reset button on the control board or the reset button that is on the system board. When the processor is reset, it starts a monitor program that prints a greeting and prepares to take other input. So running the processor on the fast clock, watching the terminal display and pushing reset, you'll see the greeting message. Then if we want to do a processor dump, uh, we'll select a, a memory dump, select 2, and we'll put in an address uh, beginning of user RAM and it shows a block of memory. This is just garbage right now, but that shows what the uh, processor is doing. Now I'll do the memory dump again with the view of the register display on the fast clock. Uh, and again, uh, there'll just be a flicker as the display is, that was the uh, address being entered, and now that's the display. The flickering just shows the processor putting the characters out to the display. Here we see the um, register display with the slow clock running. It's performing the monitor program where it prints out the greeting message. Um, if we reset the processor, you can see what happens during reset. If we hold the reset button down, the program counter you see is forced to zero, and the state register is forced to zero. Um, what this means is that when we take it out of reset and it starts to run, the first thing that the processor will do is perform a state zero function, which is a instruction fetch on the address zero. So it will get the instruction that's in location zero and put it in the opcode register. Now it actually is doing this every click. Uh, and you can see the opcode register says 1F. That's the uh, first instruction in the memory, in the ROM memory at location 0, which is a no opt, a placeholder for um, the monitor program. 
when I take it out of reset, you'll notice that the processor cycles through the states. Um, every clock tick, the state register will change. And that's really what the processor runs on, is these states. The state tells the control logic how to set the different multiplexers in the data path of the processor and which registers to write um, on each upgoing clock tick. So the first thing to notice here is just that on the slow clock the state is changing every time. And you can see it always cycles back to zero and then starts a new series of states. If you can see real quick, state one is a new opcode fetch and you'll see a new opcode come in when the state one goes on. Now, once the um, the code gets down to the point where it's printing out the characters, I can slow it down even more, and you can see what's happening on each tick of the clock using the um, the single step clock. So now, if I turn off the slow clock, the processor will stop. Now I can turn on the single step switch and run the processor with my fingers. Um, each push of the button on the right sends the clock up and on the left down. I just find this is very easy to cycle through things with my two fingers like this. I can go sort of fast or sort of slow and I can see exactly what happens on each uptick and each down tick. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and get to state zero. So right now the processor is at um, the, inst the instruction register. This is zero, five, C. C. Now if we look at instruction zero, five, C, C in the ROM monitor code. Uh, this is an out instruction that will output the character to the serial port. The instruction code is 1.8 and it has an operand of 0.2. That's the uh, address of the port. Now if you look on the CPU of a website on the 8-bit processor control logic design page, uh, you see the instructions, the mnemonic or assembly language as people would say, and the hex opcodes for the various instruction, the length of instruction, the number of bytes of each instruction, and the state sequence that the instruction will cause the processor to go through. So the current instruction that we're looking at is this instruction hexadecimal opcode 18, which is an out instruction which uh, loads an 8-bit value from the accumulator to an input-output port. The instruction itself is two bytes long, which is the opcode and the address, and it will cause the processor to run through this state sequence, 0, 1, 2, 13, 14. Here the, these are decimal, but we'll see the hexadecimal equivalence of these states come through on the state register as the instruction is executed. So looking at the register display, we're back to the um, state zero um, of the instruction that's at um, 0, 05 CC, which we saw as the out instruction. Now this is the opcode of the previous instruction. Once we go to the next clock edge, three things will happen. The 18 opcode will appear here. It's being fetched from this memory location. The program counter will be incremented by one, and the state register will go to the next state, which for state zero is always state one, the opcode um, interpretation state. So here we go, clock down, clock up. So now you saw the three things happen. The program counter is now 05CD, incremented by one. The state incremented up to one, and the opcode is fetched, which is 18, the opcode for the um, out instruction. The next tick uh, sends the state register into state 2. It performed the um, instruction interpretation and so now it's ready for um, the next event. 
So in this case, the next event is uh, fetching the second byte of the opcode. So that will be the port address, which will appear in the operand low. So if we do the next cycle, now you see the port address, uh, which is uh, 02, in the low operand. In addition, the state has been incremented, incremented to D, which is uh, the equivalent of uh, um, 13. Um, and that is part of the two states that will write um, the uh, whatever's in the accumulator uh, to the output port. In this case, the accumulator is holding the value already, ready to go. Um, the value here is uh, 2, 0, and if you look at a table of ASCII values, um, 2, 0 is a space, so it's going to put a space on the output port. So here we go to uh, state 14, or hexadecimal E, and the next uh, state will go back to 0. So now it's ready to execute the next instruction. Uh, the next instruction to be executed is going to be 05CE. So if you look on the, uh, in the raw monitor code, you can see that the instruction at 05CE is a load accumulator from memory instruction with an opcode of 11 and the operand, the low operand 34, up high operand 08. So now if we cycle through this, uh, the next click, you'll see the opcode come in, which would be 1-1, one, 1-1, one. One, one. and the operands, the low operand, will be 3-4, the upper operand will be 0-8. So again, the processor just cycles through these simple steps. Um, but when it's running at 2 megahertz, of course, it's doing this every single step that you see, but uh, at computer speed. So this concludes the demonstration of the CPUville 8-bit processor with the register display. I intend to have kits of this processor and system available for sale sometime in early uh, 2019. So uh, come back for a visit and buy one if you'd like to build one. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.